Hey, Tarosphere, it's Holly from Cape Cod Creatures, and um, decided I'd do a live chat slash unboxing. It's been a while since I've done an unboxing, um, and I got two packages in the mail today. The Untamed Truth Oracle deck from Tree Talker Art. Um, the, the girl behind this um, deck had a hand in uh, Spirit de la Lune, so that's exciting. And then I also got the Mystical Manga Tarot today, so that is exciting as well. Um, so we'll be unboxing both of those. I'm just going to wait a few seconds for some people to pop on in if you want to pop on in. And then we'll do some, we'll try to do a few readings with them too, because that'll be fun. I'm going to take a sip of water because it is hot out today. Um, so yeah, this Oracle deck, like I said, is, um, I forget the, I forget the girl's name. I will, you know what, I should look it up right now, but, um, yeah, no, she's awesome. She helped create, she helped to create the Spirit de la Lune deck. Um, truth Oracle. Uh, the name of her business is Tree Talker Art, and she's got some like awesome prints and stuff going on. You should definitely check it out. I'll put her uh, information in the doobly below um, for when this airs later. And then I'm going to do a first impression slash a full-on review of it, too. This is really just, like I said, an unboxing. Um, so, yeah. Let me see. Let me pull this back up. Hi, Carice. How are you? Um... So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna open these up. All right. Oh no! <laughs> it. Uh, I went to go pull the tab and it fell right off. That's really silly. So first of all, I love the red mailer. That's exciting. Oh shit! There's glitter in this. Okay, so there's glitter in this. I don't know if you can see, but there's like some sparkly confetti stuff in there. So. Ugh. Oh God, no, take a look. I mean, it's adorable, it's a really adorable touch, but for the love of, oh God, okay. <laughs> Not even like a little bit, oh God. Um, I don't know how I feel about having this confetti like thrown at me. It's like really cute, it's like little leaves and stuff and that's adorable, but done without the confetti. And then we've got some bubble wrap to keep the deck safe. And then here is the deck, the Untamed Truth Oracle Cards. Um, okay, so while I was watching this deck, because um, I did, I, did, I kind of stalked it for a little bit and then forgot about it and then stalked it again and then forgot about it. Um, the pastel look of the back of this box, like the box is adorable. For whatever reason, I just love the pastel-y rainbow. Um, and then the backs of the cards, if memory serve, if memory serves, are much darker, and the mandala stands out much more, which I suppose could be good. Um, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't. To me, it feels like it wasn't very cohesive. It didn't fit with the look of the deck to me. So anyway, the trash right there. Um, it says, connect to your inner wild self with the untamed. Oracle Truth, or well, the Untamed Truth Oracle cards. The deck consists of 40 cards uh, depicting major energies and archetypes commonly found in cardomancy, hand-painted images featuring bright colors and symbols, help to spark instincts and unlock your intuition. Uh, the deck includes a few explicit cards and words, um, but I believe that blunt honesty and a little bit of shock factor is sometimes just what the soul needs. So that'll be interesting to see how that plays across. Wow. So it does have the little thummy cutouts, which is nice. Deck makers, these thummy cutouts are like a small thing, but they mean the world to people who have to open your boxes. All right. So the inside of the box is plain white. Um, it's not finished in rainbow or anything like that, but um, we all know how I feel about chipboard. The chipboard is nice and thick and sturdy. Um, it's somewhere between a matte and a finished feel. Like it's not matte matte, but I do like how it's not like super shiny. Um, Cause that helps the, um, this is actually gilded, like glittery holograph gilded. So that helps that to stand out. And then the first thing you see is the Untamed Truth book. All right. So 
This is the Untamed Truth guidebook. And it's completely in black and white. The pages are glossy. Um, I don't mind a glossy page in a book. It looks like you get, oh, these aren't alphabetical. So right away the cards are not alphabetical, which is kind of a pain in the butt. But you do get um, a listing and a table of contents for quick reference. Hi, Ivan, how are you? We're unboxing the Untamed Truth Oracle cards. They just came today. This is um, Rachel, I can't break, Karen Gella, Karen Gella, Karen Gella, the, she had a hand in, um, she had a hand in Spirit de la Lune. Um, so you get, it looks like you get a couple of spreads, the definitions for the cards, um, well not the def, you get a couple of keywords and then you get like, um, you know, a little more to that. Um, hmm. And then a little bit about the creator, a blurb at the end about the creator, which is nice. Um, okay, so the deck itself, there is this foamy insert, which for those of us who have the um, Spirit de la Lune, actually, you know what, I have it right here. This is Spirit de la Lune. This is Untamed. I mean, there's definitely, there's definitely a, um, like a look about this deck. It's definitely like, you know, her deck. Um, this box has that same foamy, you know what, I'm not gonna, it has that same foamy insert, which, like, in theory I like, like, I, like, I kind of like the foamy insert, but, um, cards get stuck under it, actually, so I don't know if I'm gonna wind up, I'll probably wind up taking the foamy insert out of this, because, um, for my Spirit Day Alone Moon, anyway, cards tend to, like, slip and slide around under there, and they, um, they get stuck. So, let me just go ahead and try and get the corner of this with my little sculpting tool that has now become my deck opening tool. Maybe I'll do some sculpting today. Um, I had a I had a mini reading at like a wellness and whatever fair, and they were just like, oh, you should probably get back to doing what you do best and like creating and all that stuff. And I went pshaw. All right, so the cardstock. The cards are glossy. See how the see how the back is like much darker than the cover. Like it's way darker. I kind of would have loved if it was like that same dreamy rainbowy feel. Like this is just kind of like it's a little inconsistent. And I don't know why it bugs me, but it bugs me a little bit. Like it shouldn't bug me all that much because it's not that important, but it's a little important. Um. Okay. So the cards are glossy. The cardstock isn't too, too thick. It's honestly, it's the same kind of cardstock as found in Spirit de la Lune. You can tell they use the same printer, which is absolutely fine. Um, that means they'll shuffle really well. My Spirit de la Lune deck shuffles really well. You know, it's very, you know, the cards aren't stuck together. Um, the last, it's not like, it's not a super amazing or different cardstock. Um, it's not, it doesn't like stand out so, so much that you're like, oh my God, this cardstock stands out heads and tails above the rest. And here's what makes it unique. Um, but it is a good cardstock. It's a thick cardstock and it is a cardstock that does hold up. So I don't know. I want, I want to go shuffle these and I didn't want to shuffle them yet. All right. So here are the images we've got. Um, I believe this is also known This is Metatron's cube. Um, so you've got like creation life, earth, air, water, a lot of mandalas. This one is imagination. Oh, that one's kind of cool. I like that one. Um, this is self, cycles. This is a good one for cycles. You see the moon a lot for cycles though. Um, I can see where you got that, but I mean, you could, I don't know, there's a couple of other things you could do um, for cycles, I suppose. Um, you know, the, I, I honestly, like, I always see the moon, but we never see that with, like, I'd like to, for cycles, I'd love to see something tied in with water for cycles, like the pull of the tides, because that's very cyclical, um, or maybe a little bit more to do with the seasons. Um, but yeah, you know, cycles, pretty standard card for that. Um, 
distortion, sorry, it took me a little bit to read the cursive. I don't know why that took me so long. Um, I did grow up reading cursive. <laughs> like, um, yeah, one is, Carice just said one is more pastel, one is more primary colors. Um, so we have distortion, um, fear. It's very Grim reaper -y, like a classic Grim Reaper. You don't see classic Grim Reapers too, too often, which is kind of nice. Like a very, I feel like he just jumped out of the pages of Spirit Halloween. Um, we've got balance. Interesting that she chose a tree for balance, but you can also see the root system here. So I suppose that's where the balance comes in. Um, we've got conflict. And actually, for people that don't know, deer and elk and stuff, male deer and elk, they fight pretty, pretty, like, when they fight, like, a lot of people are like, well, why would you choose deer? Because they're so gentle. But if you've ever seen any of these animals fight, it is, like, downright scary. Um, let's see. Becoming. This is one of those, so becoming, becoming is one of those self-help words that I just hate. <laughs> like, like, I don't, um... Oh my goodness! If um, if um, Pink Shell was here, she would tell you like I, I hate, I hate the self help talky like becoming really okay. Um, which I mean I suppose is like growth. Just say growth. Like becoming and growth are I think one and the same or something like that. I don't know, but like becoming. <laughs> then we have go. For, oh, I like that. Go. They're migrating. You actually, you don't see geese too often in things. So I actually really do like that one. So this, it was a nice follow up, especially like after becoming. Like, okay, go. I like it. Uh, this says, be brave and stay wild. So at this point, we have our first full phrase. I don't like full phrases in Oracle Dex. Can I just go ahead and say that? Um, one or two words, I think, is all that you need. Um, it's a lovely wolf. I love the silhouettes, too. Um, it's also the first card where she's changed up the placement of the words. I have to see how this winds up coming up in readings for me to reserve judgment. Like, the artwork is fantastic. I don't think you needed it. I, I don't think... I don't think I don't think a full phrase was needed for that card. Um, and we have patience, which is very true. We got to be, you know, the the cougars, panthers, tigers, um, big cats. They're very patient before they strike. So I really do like this one. Although I am wondering whether or not a because um, I think that's a cougar or a puma. I wonder how appropriate that is for this scenery. Um, then we've got. Tend. I like this one. Because um, you do, you have to tend to a garden. You can't just, can't just, it's like I'm talking to myself right now. You cannot just throw some tomato plants in the ground and expect them to give you tomatoes without taking care of them. Thank you, Ivan. It does. It feels a little inconsistent. Not too bad, but um, like I said, it could, like it could, it could, like, it depends on how it's all going to flow together in readings. But I do like this card, Tens. Like I said, you can't just throw some seeds in the ground and fucking expect pumpkins months later, which magically is what happened to me this year. But <laughs> I'm terrible at gardening, you guys. Um, what's this one? Rota, R-O-T-A. It's a wheel, like a wheel of fortune. I'm getting a very wheel of fortune-y vibe from this. Yeah, bravery would have been, you're right, bravery could have, would have been a more succinct word or, you know, um, use or instinct would have been a really good, um, would have been a really good word for that. Fight or flight would have been a wonderful, would have been a wonderful phrase to capture because it still captures like um stay wild be brave it captures wilderness and you know you know being brave um this one is passion hummingbirds can we talk about hummingbirds for a second i love hummingbirds i actually have them like on me um the hummingbirds are passionate in that they're very territorial um 
I think this would have been better on a like a better better um, like I always see like I don't know why I see how like they always bug me. They always seem like they're like misplaced and used incorrectly. I mean, they're tiny, brave, like they, they fight against the odds. I don't think that hummingbirds are necessarily passionate about things other than being jerks. I don't know if you guys have had encounters with hummingbirds, but like I said, very territorial. I mean, my mom has a hummingbird that lives on her back deck and like you can't, like when it's, when it's like mating season and they're nesting and stuff, because they will peck your eyeballs out. <laughs> like, like he, he, swoops down and whatever like they're they're jerks and then like they fight they have little aerial battles over my mom's hummingbird feeder and that's why i like hummingbirds so much is like they 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 don't back down which is you would think like really weird for something so tiny um but i don't know about passion for a hummingbird i would have to read about why she did that um so i always it always really bothers me whenever i see um hummingbird thingies like just there's a hummingbird, it's passion. Um, so <laughs> this is, yes, they're passionate. Yes, exactly, Mystical Cottage. They are passionate about dive bombing us. Um, creative Coffee, oh my God, Creative Coffee, how are you? When did you sneak in there? Um, let's see, okay. This is Love. I mean, like gardening. Um, I mean, like gardening. Like I, I always say, like okay. So, Crease, as far as gardening is concerned, um, I love the idea of gardening. I love the idea of picking tomatoes in my front yard. I don't want to have to remember to water my garden. Why <laughs> is that terrible? <laughs> um, like I don't want to weed the garden. I don't want to. Like, I don't want to do anything for the garden. I just want to, like, walk out there and have their magic leave a zucchini. Um, I feel like once I have time to actually garden, it'll be better. But, like, this year I tried. I tried so hard to garden. And by tried so hard means I put some squash seeds in the ground. And I put some tomato plants in the ground. And I put some turnips in the ground. All of which yielded but would have yielded better if I had taken the time to, like, weed the garden and um, set up the garden correctly. Because um, I put soaker hoses in my squash. And apparently that gives squash the powdery mildew um like i just didn't i'm just like i put i put you in the ground huh? where's my tomatoes like, mm. like, like i didn't take care of any of it <laughs> like oh, the garden didn't do that well this year and my husband's like no shit like no shit you didn't take good care of it and then i go shut up and then he goes you shut up okay so anyway um faith this is an, I love this card for Faith. Um, it's a huge, it looks like it's either an, I don't, you know what? I, it looks like it's either, an, this could be, I love that this one is like kind of ambiguous in what it is because it could mean several different things. Um, it looks like it's a seed growing a root system, like hanging out over the winter, but it could also be um, an ant colony hunkering down over the winter. It could be, um, you know, it could very well just be roots. It looks like a landscape. I think it's just, you know, it's faith that the seed's gonna grow, but it's faith that you're gonna make it through the winter too. Um, this is the uh, Creative Coffee. This is the Untamed, or uh, Untamed Truth Oracle cards. Uh, this is a brand new deck by um, one of the ladies responsible for Spirit de la Lune. Um, her name is Rachel uh, Karen Gella. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Spirit, we've got some birch trees, which are really fucking creeping me out. This is one of the ones I had a lot of trouble with and almost made me say no to the deck. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the birch trees Kindly focus. All right, so it's gonna be a jerk for now, but um, the birch trees have eyeballs on them and that really weirds me out. For whatever reason, that weirds me out. Um, focus, this is one of the cards that looks like it's from a completely different deck. I do, however, love that there's no face involved with this. If you're gonna do people in a deck for whatever reason, like I get, like either have 
poorly drawn people is like the worst. Um, so if you're if you're not like super amazing at drawing people, do silhouettes. It's easier to imagine the silhouettes as other people um, and apply them to situations a little more. Um, you know, it, it's it's. I don't know, it's easier, it's easier to like, kind of like imagine it for other people, but focus, this is a good one for focus. Um, we've got restriction. I don't know why. It's a beautiful, but I don't know why. Um, the skull is there for restriction. This is partnership. A crow and a wolf. Not really partners. I would have done something a little more symbiotic, like maybe the birds that clean out the crocodile teeth or a remora fish or something, like some, you know, something a little, some, a little more of a symbiotic relationship. Um, I, I, I suppose that if like a bunch of crows fly away, the wolves are alerted to the presence of a predator, but I don't really know how this is a partnership. Um, then we got renewal. It's about the spirit of birch as a tree. I mean, I guess, but oh, my eyeballs, I don't like it. Um, okay, so renewal is a fox and it looks like it's springtime and everybody's waking up. So that's kind of fun, it's a beautiful card. And then, oh, this is very Monet-ish. Uh, we've got an abundance, an abundance of wildflowers. There's water, it's a very springy, beautiful card. Um, and then this is endurance. Cactuses flourishing in the desert despite there being a lack of water. That's, that's a good one for that. And then this is fulfillment as a, again, more mandalas or mandalas or, <sighs> this card says, oh fuck. I, okay, so unless, <laughs> um, we all know how much I love Rebel Deck, and I believe that this is where this is probably the spirit for this is probably coming from. Unless you're going to have an entire deck full of hard truths and foul language and sassiness, no need. No need. I guess, like it just, you know, this... I don't know, like again, I'd have to see how this shows up in a reading. like. I hate it when swearing sounds forced. That's all. Like I hate it. Either like swear or don't. Like it's 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 really easy to tell when somebody is forcing themselves to drop f bombs and be swear and be cool and be ridiculous. And it's easy to tell when somebody like you know it's a word that like either you, either you use the language or you don't. And it just it's it's not supposed to be forced. It's supposed to, like it just if it comes up naturally, fine. But um, yeah, that is, I don't, mm -mm. So this is connection. And this is choice. It's a beautiful card. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess maybe. Um, and then this is manifest. I do love this is like, again, the artwork. Yeah, Ivan is right. The deck does feel inconsistent. Um, Although this is a very beautiful card, I do love this. A little crow feather. Um, this is Messenger. <gasps> I love this one. This is officially my favoriteest card ever. I love Cardinals. I love them. Cardinals and Blue Jays, two of my favorite birds. Um, so I do, I do love this card. And then this is Rest. And then this is Bloom. Oh, it just says bloom across in words. I don't think it needed that. And then this one is really, really, like <laughs> this one is fuck it. Really, like, really, that's all I have to say about that. Is like, okay, I. This is. It's like I love her videos, but every time Elise drops like Elise from Wild Moon Woman, this is like this is like this is like watching Elise from Wild Moon Woman swear because she's just not good at it. 
like, I'm sorry, Elise, I love you very much. Your channel is amazing and you're a very amazing, positive person. Watching you swear is like watching somebody get a root canal. And this, like, having swears in this, like, this is like a root canal in the middle of this deck. No, no. Um, so this one is emotion, which I'm clearly feeling right now. I'm feeling I'm having emotions about the swearing in this deck. Like it just, it's out, it's so out of place. Um, and then this one is the unknown. I do like this one. This is a very beautiful, serene and peaceful card. And then this one is security. Okay. Um, that's this deck. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Ivan. At first glance, this deck is really inconsistent. There's like <sighs> the artwork, the the um the artwork is really cute. Like I do like the mandalas. Like now that I'm looking at them, especially for the elements. All right, so fire. This one is fiery. It's got like flames and stuff. Earth has leaves and acorns, which is really adorable. Um, air has like feathers and birds, water has seashells and stuff. I don't know, like I do, I do, <sighs> yeah, I mean, so Carice says, what gift? No, I didn't, it doesn't look like I got a gift with it. I guess the first 50 people to order the deck or the first 100, 200 people to order got a gift. Uh, mine just came with, mine just came with, um, oh, for those that are late to the party, it comes with glitter, so beware of that. <laughs> like, beware of that when you open it. Like, it's like, it's big chunks of confetti, but it's still glittery. But no, I did not get the gift that comes with it. There's a gift that comes with it. Um, do we know what the gift is yet? I don't know what the gift is. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think I probably ordered too late. I ordered a few days before the deck was out because honestly, like I saw it and I was like, oh yeah, I should probably get that. And then I forgot about it and now I've ordered it and, and then I want I did wind up ordering it. Um, but no, no gift. Um, oh, a crystal. Yeah, no, there's definitely no crystal in here. Um, it was for the yeah, no crystal, because wasn't it, it wasn't going to be like an intuitive, yeah, it was going to be an intuitively chosen crystal for the first however many people, and then, um, and then everybody else was supposed to get it, like, was everybody else supposed to get a crystal, or was it just like the first 200 people got a crystal? Oh, yeah, there's like glitter everywhere, you guys. So, no, I did not get a crystal. Um, which I'm okay with, honestly. Like, I've got plenty of crystals. There's a few more kinds of crystals I want to get, but, um, like, I'm all right without a crystal. Well, I'm a little sad now. Um, maybe I got it fast because I'm closer, or maybe because she didn't have to give me a crystal because I ordered late. Maybe that's a little, like, I know it's a little backwards, but... Um, oh, she's from Utah. Yeah, I have no idea why I got mine so fast. I got, I actually got it yesterday. Um, so yeah, that's weird. Maybe the people getting crystals, it just can take a little bit longer. Yeah, no crystal in that. All right. So I'll do a draw with that in a second because I actually have a second unboxing. What? So this one I've actually been looking forward to for a really long time. It's the Mystical Manga Tarot. Um, yes. Oh my goodness. So this is just an Amazon one. Really, really excited for this deck. What? Um, apparently this was, this was one that I found out about too late to do. I like, I don't know if it ever went to indie print because I feel like, um, I feel like I saw this one flying. Hmm. Are these my real eyes? Yeah. I mean, you know, I grew them myself. So <laughs> for those, Lauren asked me if those are my real eyes. And I said, yep, they're my real eyes. I grew them myself. Um, so, um, yes, Mystical Maga Tarot. <laughs> 
Um, I've been, I followed some of the images on, um, Oh, uh, Creative wants to know what tarot and oracle deck I'm using the most at the moment. And honestly, I kind of jump around from tarot and oracle decks, but um, you know, they're blue. Actually, the color just isn't coming across really well here. They're like a they're like a gray blue. My sister has really bright green eyes, and yeah, yeah, we're we're all mixed up. All right, so we've got mystical manga tarot. And uh, this is by uh, Ran. Follow him on DeviantArt or her on DeviantArt, him or her. I'm actually unsure of, you know, what's going on with that artist. Um, but the cards, the card images looked wicked beautiful um, online. And uh, yeah, and it's a Llewellyn deck. So before I even, before I even, I was about to, I was about to open it. Um, first of all, magnetic box. Yay. I love when Llewellyn does magnetic boxes, and I'm always really excited about the box, and then ultimately saddened by the quality of the cardstock. So <laughs> I feel like I've got to prepare for a minute to be disappointed. All right. So, oh, the, and to answer Creative Coffee's question, um, the deck I'm using the most at the moment, I've been bouncing around lately from deck to deck. I've been trying to figure out like a good fall one to use. And I do use Pagan Other Worlds an awful lot, but I've got so many decks. Like I, I feel like I've got to maybe like start showing some love to some other decks. Um, but anyway, all right. So you open it up and we are greeted. We are greeted with um, a wonderfully finished box on the inside. We've got this weird clown sun, just in time for those who are terrified by it. And we've got this cute little jester. This is the guidebook. Llewellyn's guidebooks are always, um, oh no, my box is a little, little rippy do. Oh. Um, all right, so anyway, Llewellyn books are always pretty decent. Um, nice and thick. Oh, the pages in this one are glossy, too. That's a first for a Llewellyn book. And the pages are in color, which is really interesting. Um, this is the first time I've seen a Llewellyn book with glossy pages and with the cards in color. So that's really cool. You get a little bit about the decks. You get the spreads. Um, a little bit about, like, glossary and FAQs. I uh, would have to... You know, I have to like go ahead and give this whole book a read. But um, you get a shit ton of advertising. This is all advertising at the end of the book. Llewellyn books, stop it. We don't need to be advertised at that much. It's like a thousand pages of ads. Um, like really too many ads. Oh, and then they have further study, which is really nice. So. It looks like there's like more resources you can look into, like an appendix. This looks like it was written like this is like a college paper. It's like got sizes, size, uh, you know, sources cited and all that good stuff. But anyway, um, <laughs> and the cover actually feels really nice too. It's like a matte cover. So this is a decent book. I'm actually very impressed by the book. The books by Llewellyn, like I said, have been really amazing lately. But um, the cardstock has been kind of shitty. Like, it's always been shitty, but, like, it's especially shitty lately. So it's got the ribbon to try and get the deck out, but that doesn't seem to... Oh, there we go. That, there we go. It also has, like, the finger cutouts. And this is just your classic Llewellyn box, I guess. Um, I loved when Llewellyn used to give you either, like, a little organza bag or, like, a little punch-out cutout tuck box. So if you wanted to travel with the deck, you could. But they don't do that anymore, I don't think. Um, all right, what did I do with my pointy sharp doohickey? I don't, I don't know what I did with it, so I'll just use my knife. So the the deck is the deck is um, Llewellyn size. It's nothing special as far as size or whatever is concerned. Nothing of note, I should say. Um, all right, the backs of the cards are like this. Oh, 
Womp, womp, womp. Um, this is so flimsy. Dear artists and tarot deck makers and whatever, stop. Stop it until Llewellyn gets their shit together and can produce on a nicer cardstock. Like, so mad right now. <laughs> so mad. The, I will say the nice thing about this deck is that I pre-ordered it. So I had the pre-order price protection. So it wasn't as, it wasn't very expensive. Thank goodness. Um, but, like, why go through all the trouble? Seriously, why go through all the trouble of making a nice book and a nice box and then you take these lovely cards and you stick them on shit stock. Like, could we stop? Where's the fuck it card when I need that? When I when I need it. Like, <sighs> um. But anyway. Okay. So clearly, stock is an issue. Um. But uh, and you know what? Too the colors. This is the other thing I don't like about Llewellyn. Um. There printing process, whatever it is that they're doing, always seems to wash out the colors of a deck. Um, when you look at this person's, like I get that there's gonna be like, oh, screen resolutions and colors might be a little bit different and yada, yada, yada. But uh, the cards can't uh, the cards can't get mad. They know I'm not yelling at the card. The cards know I'm not yelling. Well, the cards are, the cards won't get mad. Um, I can yell at you. I can yell at Llewellyn all that I want because the cards deserve better, and Llewellyn didn't deliver. So, um, the other thing I don't like about Llewellyn is if you look at this, guys. Um, if you look at this, if you look at if you look at Rain's or Ran, if you look at Rand's artwork online, the colors are much more vivid. Um, and then Llewellyn's printing process—they always wind up looking a little washed out. Um, but the images do remain beautiful. The colors are still pretty decent. Um, I do like the manga characters. Out of all the manga decks that I have seen, this is one of the one of the more fully realized and cohesive manga decks that I've run across. Um, you know, the artwork is rich. The colors are awesome. The line work is really nice. Um, you know, it's still true to the original. Um, the, the original, like, essence of the characters, as far as that's concerned. Um, well, not the characters, like, the archetypes, like, the, 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 the arcana. It's, it's still, like, you can get, even without the subtitle, you, you, or without the title of the card on there, you can, you know, you can tell what's going on there. You don't have to guess. I do like the strength card. She's in a, she's in a suit of armor. It's hard to tell. Oh, there we go, focused on her, excellent. Um, but yeah, like I said, it's one of the most fully realized uh, manga decks I have run across. Very well, like I said, very well thought out. Um, not as disappointing as my manga university tarot, that one was very disappointing. Uh, let's go ahead and skip to Go ahead and skip to the uh, right. We'll skip to the the pips. All right, which are not pip style. They are actually illustrated. So this is wands. So it's definitely like some classic RWS imagery in there um, with a few twists and turns, which is really nice. So you're not just left with um, that's an interesting one for the five of wands. Usually you see a bunch of people like trying to hit each other with the sticks. Oh, you know what? They're all, that was a little hard to see at first, but. No. All right. Yeah. You got a bunch of people grabbing for them. So yeah, I don't know. Like this is, I mean, over, it's a great deck. Don't get me wrong. Um, I would be interested to see if it ever, if it's, if there's an indie version out there. I don't think it had the chance to go to indie. I think they, I think, um, you know, so Llewellyn must have a scout or something like the, like the tarot version of a football scout, <laughs> the talent scout. So I think it never, I don't think this deck ever really made it to indie printing. 
um, but it is beautiful. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of show that off a little bit. But yeah, the cardstock is horrible. Not the card's fault, it's Llewellyn's fault. All right, so that's really all we got going on with that. So those are my two unboxings. I'll do like full on reviews at some point later, but um, yeah, I think the thing that we focused on today mostly was the, um, the Untamed Truth Guidebook. But anyway, yeah, Lauren, you're right, it does. It, it flows the best, and yes, yes, Curry's thin cardstock is the worst thing on the face of the planet. I do not know why Llewellyn continues to use thin cardstock. Honestly, like, like it's it's awesome that the decks are so cheap. Like you can get them, you know, relatively cheaply on um, on Amazon and stuff. But I would definitely pay like five dollars more for better stock. Excellent. Thank you for fixing your box. You did so to the detriment of the stock. Like. I don't use the box that much. I use the cards way more. I would love if the cards would, you know, hold up. The box is gonna last longer. At this point, it's like the box is gonna last like a nuclear blast, and then the cards are just like you look at them and they burst into flames. Like, I can't. I don't understand. I don't understand when people do that. Um, so creative coffee, yeah, you love I know you love oracles. Um, you're in the market for a new tarot deck. What were you thinking about getting? So I know that you were having some trouble with tarot. Oh. Water time. I has a thirst. Um, but yeah. All right. So let's do some readings, you guys. If anybody wants a reading, you can stick it in the doobly. I've got a few decks at my disposal. Um, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to tell you guys. Um, if you like Angelarium, Peter Morbacher has, this is a little, like a bridge size pack of cards called Year One, Angelarium Year One. And they're available on his website and I wound up ordering them. And they're basically like teeny tiny Angelarium cards, which is really nice. Um, Spirit Song, that would probably be a good one for you, Creative. It's like a very, very happy version of, oh, somebody, somebody described it as like the cotton candy version of Wild Unknown. Um, and I think I think I am gonna wind up um, ordering Spirit Song. I was on the fence about it, and I was like, no. And then I was just like, oh, maybe. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, some of the some of these. All right. So these are the ones by Peter Morbacher. Um, and the cards he has split up into like the Seraphim, and he describes that a little bit. Um, and it's basically all of the all of the cards from Angelarium plus some. That's all. It's just and then the backs have like little descriptions, which is really nice. It's like a travel size version of Angelarium. Because the more I use Angelarium, here's the thing that I do not enjoy about Angelarium. The more that I use Angelarium, the Oracle deck is and and like look into the guidebook and whatnot is. Um, the guidebook doesn't have any keywords. It doesn't have, it's just, it's very, it's, it's, it's a very intuition-y deck, but sometimes, like I hate to say it, like as readers, intuition fails us. And it's nice to have book meanings to fall back on. And there aren't any. It's like a training wheel, it's like a deck without training wheels and I kind of hate it. Um, well, I like, I like it, but that annoys me about it. Oh, so thirsty. Um, the Druid Craft, I saw Druid Craft, it doesn't make me, I don't want it. Like, I'm, I'm all right with it. Um, so yeah, if anybody wants a reading, you just put your question in the chat box and then I'll do a reading for you, I'm more than happy to. Um, we can read with the two new decks I just got and then I've got a few others on hand as well. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, who backed True Black? I did. Um, I'm very excited for that deck. Um, for those that haven't seen True Black Tarot on Kickstarter, it is awesome. It's a minimalist deck, and normally I hate those, but the artwork is so, like, it's just so perfect. I, like, I hate to use that word for a deck because I know I either will or won't be, um, 
like it, it, it I'm either gonna love or hate it but um true like you know like I don't want to be let down I don't want to build it up in my head but um yeah, watching a lot of YouTuber tarot, and there's a lot of cool, fancy decks out there. Um, there are. Lauren, just so you guys know, that's what Lauren said. Um, I do have Ritual Abuse Tarot. It's right up on the shelf over there. Um, why don't you get that one, Creative? You keep asking me to read with that one for you. Why not just get that one? Clearly something about it speaks to you. Um, I think that would probably be a good deck for you. Just get it. Um, yeah, there's a lot of cool, fancy decks. Um, I feel like there's, at this point, I feel like there's almost like too many. Like you have people creating decks just for the sake of creating decks, which honestly is kind of what I feel this was. Um, not that it's not a lovely deck, it is, but it's just incohesive. Um, yeah, all right, so let's go ahead. If you want a reading, questions in the doobly and we'll read with we'll read with the new deckies um like i said i've got a couple of other deckies floating around a general reading about the upcoming week would you like it with the ritual abuse tarot um all right let me grab my oh you know what i haven't used in a while like there is disciples all right <sighs> I've got disciples there too. Um, there's the darkness of light tarot. I really want that, but I've been waiting for um, for the artist. He said he was going to come out with a couple more of his limited edition versions with like the handmade box. Um, all right, mystical, I got gotcha. you. Hollow metallic giant. Thanks. Um, holographic metallic. What's the what's the one that you're talking about, Lauren? Hologra the hollow metallic giant thick cardstock cards. Which ones would those be? I will say, um, creative. If you wind up getting ritual abuse tarot, um, the cardstock is amazing. All right, and then Mystical Cottage, was there any particular deck you wanted me to read for you with, an oracle or a tarot deck? Um, so we a general reading for Creatives Week coming up. I wonder if Ivan's still kicking in there. You still hanging in, Ivan? Ivan, did you order Mystical Manga Tarot? Is that one that you did, if you're still kicking in there? All right. Just get it. It comes in a tin. You always ask for it. You always like the readings that happen out of it. Just get it. That's clearly the deck does something for you, so just get it. Um, all right, so for the week for creative. Worst case scenario, you, you know, you have to sell it. All right, so general reading for you for the week. Um, you got the Five of Wands, and then you got the, um, what is this, the Knight of Swords, and you got Lovers. So... This all says to me there's a um, this all says to me that there is a decision that you've got to make. You have to is there like something you have to decide relatively soon? Because um, this is kind of conflicty to me, like small arguing, bickering, conflicty stuff. Like I don't know. And then lovers is always a card about you know decisions. It's not always a card. It's not a card necessarily about relationships, but it is a card about decision making and change like a like a kind of a big change but like a change that all parties kind of agree on like a change of partnerships a change of relationship a change in living situation um but it's not like a bad change like it's a good change like it's a change that needs to happen like and it's not um not as um it's not as sudden or as drastic a change as you would see with like the death card or the tower card. Um, it, it's like a change that you knew was coming and like it's gradually been built up to and like now it's like, okay, like boop, here's a little, 
here's your push, make it. Um, and then the Knight of Swords is somebody that, you know, they like to take action um, in an intellectual way of speaking, like you kind of sorted through your your hows and your whys, um, and it's time to just kind of get there and make that decision and do what you need to do. Like it's clearly there's something that you need to do and that you're meant to do this week, and you know about it, and it's time to do it because it's going to help you get to the next level for where you're supposed to be, if that makes any sense. Um, and I don't know what this bickering is about, but knock it off. It's not like, I don't know, I'm getting kind of like a little, a little like, okay, yeah, there's some bickering and yeah, it's stupid and it sucks, but you're kind of feeding into it a little bit. So stop feeding into it. Like for, if you want it to end, like this is, I think one of those situations where you might have to be the bigger person and stop it on like, on like, even though it might mean having to like, you know, not necessarily admit that you're wrong, but like, just be like, yeah, whatever I'm wrong, whether you are wrong or not. So at least take steps as far as you're concerned. That's the, yeah, that's the wand. Take steps as far as you're concerned to end the bickering. And yeah, uh, the only other thing I'll show you that's kind of similar, these are like the same character almost, but I hope that helps. All right, let's see. Is it sold out on, is it sold out? Um. Because I feel, I don't know, if I were you, um, is this hold on on Etsy? Maybe he just hasn't restocked it yet. Maybe send, maybe send the artist a, um, maybe send him a little like, hey, I'd like that. Because the deck has been out for a while. It's not like it's been, maybe he just doesn't have any stock left and he's got to reorder. But um, yeah, I would definitely like always, anytime a deck, anytime you see a deck is out, like half the decks that I get, um, as far as indie or Etsy are concerned, it's always like, the deck is sold out. And then I just send a message to the artist before I start searching elsewhere. I'm just, like, I pop the, because usually they have extras or they know somebody who bought like a thousand copies from them. Um, so I always pop the artist a message to be like, hey, I'd love to, yeah. Oh, Mystical just dropped him a PM. There you go. Yeah, always ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. Maybe it's like an NPC thing and you can just order up like five copies or something. Oh. I am parched. I don't know what that is about, but oh my god. All right, so Mystical Cottage, you would like a reading. Any particular deck that you would like a reading from? A general reading for your week. What am I doing? Putting that over there. All right. All right, so I'm gonna use tarot for you. Um, general reading, all right, great. I'm gonna use the new Mongol. Oh no, I'm bad at shuffling it already. Um, <laughs> why, why? I'm having so much trouble, so much trouble shuffling that stupid deck already. It's not a stupid deck, it's a great deck and I really look forward to reading with it and we're gonna read with it right now. All right, so a general week ahead for mystical. <laughs> so, yes, I am excited. I've got a little bit of time back, which is awesome. Um, starting to slow down at the shop a little bit, and I decided, like, you now it's like this, this thing where my store steals my life away. It's like time for it to come to an end, at least for the year. And, um, you'll see me floating around on the forum a lot more. Um, You'll see me here a little bit more. I'll do, I have committed to do um, my Sunday chats and I have committed to do uh, at least one of the breakfast chats a week. So two live chats and then um, any deck reviews or whatever that comes up. I'd love to do more tarot tags. I haven't seen any tarot tags I've really like super been into lately though. Um, I think I'm gonna do a couple of the so this deck is shuffling really well, um, but it's Llewellyn cardstock. That is the one thing I will say about Llewellyn cardstock is it does always shuffle really well. Ooh, you got a jumper. Ooh, ooh you got a good jumper. All right. So general reading for the week for Mystical. Mm 
Okay. Da, 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 da. Let's see. You got your jumper was the star. So that's amazing. Awesome week ahead, if that's the case. Oh my goodness. Um, you got the hair fant. You got the six you so let me just show you, Durr. So you got the hair fant. You got the six of coin and you got the 10 of wands. So this says to me, um, honestly, you're probably not going to want to hear it, but this says to me, like, like if there's something that you want to like, the, like a little bit of financial troubles, um, but this kind of says to me, suck it up, <laughs> like, which is like not horrible. Like there's, you know, there's definitely hope ahead. Um, but I'm kind of getting the vibe that like just some old school work ethic and money management will help see you through the tougher time. And it's not going to last too, too long. Like there's, cause you know, the star card is definitely is like a car of hope and wish granting and all that good stuff. I think, um, you know, like your traditional old school, like back in my day, we used to work for 14 cents a year. And man, 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 man. like, this is like classic, like we're work ethic, you dang kids is kind of what I'm getting from that guy. And, um, you know, the six of the six of Pentacles or coin in this case is usually about um, charitable giving or being on the receiving or giving end of charity, but it's also about like being financially responsible. I always like to see this as you cannot give from an empty vessel if you're not managing your money wisely and you don't have the money to give, you shouldn't be giving it. <laughs> like you need to, you need to take care of yourself and make sure your bills are paid and that whatever, and then you can find the room to give charitably. Um, because you can't, like, you've got to take care of yourself and your family. Like, you can't take care of anybody else if you're not taking care of yourself. And that applies to everything, emotional, spiritual, and financial, like, you, you and physical. Like, you need to be able to, like, you got to go to work. You got to, like, have a roof over your head. You have to, um, you know, you have to put ramen in your belly. Like you have to, like you, you've got to, you've got to do what you got to do and you can't be giving if you're not taking care of yourself. And then you also too, you got to be careful about who you give to giving irresponsibly to people that just refuse to help themselves is not helping anybody. And it's not helping you. It might make you feel better temporarily, but in the long run, like you also have to give wisely. Um, and then you also have to, you also have to like spend wisely as well. It's like about just being a little more wise with your money. Um, and it might feel like it's a long road ahead to get to that point where you like need to get to, but um, you're almost there. You know, this is a card of burden, hard work and like it sucks, but it's almost there. Like this is, these two seem to me like they need to go together. You've got your Ten of Wands and you've got your Star card. So you're almost at the finish line. Like you're almost there. Like just, just tighten your belts a little bit and be a little more responsible and wise with what you're doing with your money. And maybe, like I said, a little more old fashioned with what you're doing with your money. Um, you know, just, just rope it in. But that's kind of what I'm getting from that. If that makes any sense to you this week. Um, I hope it makes sense, but anyway, there's that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody? If you have any questions, you just put your questions in the doobly. Um, but yeah, that's the, actually, you know, that read, that deck read really well. Very pleasantly surprised about that. Um, although I don't know if I'm really that surprised. Llewellyn Dex, I will say this about Llewellyn Dex too, for whatever reason, um, Llewellyn Dex always read really well. They're, the decks themselves are always very cohesive. Um, they're very um, familiar because they do kind of stick pretty close to the RWS meanings. I, I don't know, like they just always read really well. Um, so, which is why it's always such a pretty it's on terrible stock. Okay, I'll let it go. I'm gonna let it go this time just for today. I will let this go. Um, 
Mm. Anybody else? Aw, good. I hope that I hope it works out for you, Mystical. Um, yeah, so anyway, what have you guys been up to? I haven't like talked to any of you guys in a while. So if anybody has anything new or noteworthy to share, um, that would be amazing. Um, what else is going on? I don't know. Not too, too much going on in my life right now. So I don't really have too, too much to share. Um, yeah. What did I just do? I cut the deck weird. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Really, I got nothing else unless you guys want more readings. What time is it? 4.55? How long have we been on? I feel like we've been on for a while. Um, there's a tag called September Deck Love. Ooh, it's a little late, but I will have to, I'll have to check, I'll have to check that out. That's always a tag I could do. Um, is it like what decks that I do or don't love? Um, cause I love them all. They're, they're, well, I don't love them all. That's a lie. Um, <laughs> but only an hour. That's it. It feels like it's been a little bit longer than that. I don't know why. Time is, time moves weird sometimes. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah. And like I said, anybody on, no, I don't do astrology, Lauren. I've actually been debating whether or not I want to get into that or if that's a whole other can of worms. Because I'd love to, I actually bought um, Lon Milo Duquette's book about the Thoth. And I have a Thoth, I have a couple of Thoth decks that I'd like to get into. And they rely really heavily on astrology um, imagery and stuff. And I have another, I got, I backed a little astrology deck on Indiegogo, which I was very disappointed in. I'll do a review for that one soon. Like it's, it's okay, but it's not like that great. It's not. Um... But yeah, no, I'll, um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to open up that can of worms. Like if I ever did, it wouldn't be like, I don't know that I would take it as serious as I take tarot. Um, it's just, it's a lot. Astrology is so involved. Like with all the charts and the houses and the everything. Um, I, like I have a great admiration for the people that are able to do something with it, but Outside of reading my horoscope in the Sunday Times, um, <laughs> or doing like those stupid do Pisces and whatever, get like do they mix well? Like what's going on? Like I've never really been too too into astrology. Um, I have a hard time memorizing dates, uh, so that makes it a little bit difficult. And then I don't know. Like a lot of it relies on people knowing their exact birthdays and times and. A lot of people don't know that, so you can't really give a very accurate reading if they don't. Like, I don't know, I just, and then like knowing all the stars and the stories behind the constellations and what the constellations mean, and then the astrology houses, it just, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a field of study, and I feel like it's a field of study that needs to be started when your brain is young and supple and like can actually absorb the information. Um, my brain is no longer young and supple. Mm -mm. it's a bitter it's a bitter dried up leathery piece of like dried up leather um Carice wants to know how are the dogs and the birds they're good Tasha bit me the other day um pretty bad actually he got down to the bone so it's nastier than it looks everybody who has birds for pets will tell you that they're not always the best pets but they're cute and Henrietta, I like to stick little bows in her feathers now. I figured that out the other night while I had a cocktail. So <laughs> her, I like I ran out to the children's store immediately and I bought her a shit ton of bows and she's not into it. But I am. <laughs> so <laughs> poor thing. Um, but they're good right now. They're actually kind of napping. So that's why I left them all to whatever in the air conditioning. It's like 70 some odd degrees here today, which is insane because like it's the middle of September, like it's the end of September. It's 70, 75 degrees out in Massachusetts, the end of September. Oh, the Disciples deck. So any of those who aren't familiar with Disciples, this is a deck that I got, um, I backed it and it is a beautiful deck. And then it came and it was a surprise, right? Surprise. Game crafter. No, Carice, it is not a love bite. He has no love for me. It is a hate bite. Like, this is most definitely 
a hate bite. I've been trying to get him more used to having my hands around because he doesn't like, for whatever reason, he doesn't like my hands. Um, he doesn't like me in general, but he just doesn't, he's like afraid of my hands. So I need to like, so I've been trying to like desensitize him to them and he just, <sighs> you were sick with the disciples. Did you get this one, Mystical? Is this one that you own? Because I, like, the imagery is beautiful. I think it, like, it definitely, like, it gives it gives some of the other collage decks out there a run for its money, but Game Crafter. Like, oh, inconsistent borders, inconsistent fonts. But the imagery is gorgeous. I will, I, you can't take that away from it. So anyway, if anybody wants a reading, for those who are just joining in, you just put your um, thingies in the doobly, um, your questions in the chat box. Yeah, yeah, the cardstock, yeah, Game Crafter, surprise Game Crafter, which is, like, it's one thing to buy a Llewellyn deck to know that you're going to get shitty stock. It's another thing to back an indie deck. Um, generally, for those who are just who are new to tarot, um, indie deck, indie decks are um, usually with indie decks you get a decent, like a better card stock, a box. You get an, a, like an original work of art, basically, and a higher quality than you'd get from a place like uh, like like a Llewellyn deck or um, Low Scarabeo. Low Scarabeo, you just get a tuck box. Although some indie decks you do just get tuck boxes, but usually the card stock is decent. The artwork is beautiful and original. And like it just it, like it's got like a different feel. Like I love supporting indie decks, except for when they come from Game Crafter. Um, there's only one Game Crafter deck that I have that I absolutely love, and it is the um, uni Unicorn. Oh, oh my goodness! I need to move that. I got a crystal bowl, and I have it on the floor, and I keep forgetting that it's there, and I keep stepping on it. So I need to move it before I break it. The, the Dancing Unicorn Oracle. This is the only Game Crafter deck that I have that I like. And, oh, what's the Voyager Tarot? I don't, I haven't seen that one. Um, and then the Stretch Tarot. I haven't seen that one either. But Game Crafters, their, their decks aren't cheap. So it's not like it's not like the um, artists are making too too much money off of Game Crafter, and the quality isn't that. The quality isn't that great. Um, but yeah, anyway, an oldish collage deck. I'll have to take a look at it. I'm sure I could find it at some point. Yeah, there's some older tarot decks that I just haven't really run across yet, and I think I'm kind of slow. I'm definitely slowing down in my collecting. Um, I find that I've been backing a lot of, oh, that reminds me, um, the um, Arcanus Tarot should be arriving soon. I cannot wait for that one. That is one that um, I ordered on Kickstarter and should be here soon. I'm so excited. And yeah, I think that's it for Kickstarter. Oh, and um, there's another Hidden Forest Oracle is one that I got on Kickstarter too. It should be here soon. So yeah, I've been doing like Kickstarter stuff lately. Although I did find out that Hidden Forest, the Hidden Forest Oracle is Game Crafter. Like <laughs> Game Crafter is just so shitty. If you are going to be like seriously deck deck creators, I love you. Like amazing. Shout out to all the artists who are super good at creating decks and like do like have that artistic vision. Like amazing. We need you. We absolutely do. If you are going to print with Game Crafter, you need to tell us because it's just not going to end well for you if you don't. Sorry. Um, but yes, I will have to check out Stretch Tarot. If anybody has any questions, by the way, go ahead and put your uh, reading doobly in the doohickey. Um, otherwise, if nobody else wants a reading, I might actually call it a day because I'm running out of stuff to talk about, if we're honest. Um, so yeah. All right, so let's see. 
I'm going to pull out a card of the week. I'm going to pull us a card of the week out of this new deck because we should. I read with it. I had it earlier. Voyager Tarot. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen the Voyager Tarot yet. I have to take a look at it. Oh yeah, I got to pull from this Oracle Creative. It is it is the um I did start the reading, but they gotta come full circle. Yeah, I mean, I thought about making my own deck, but I'm not into that. There's, I know some people did that. Like I know um, New Age Hipster did an Instagram oracle with images from her Instagram. And I know that um, Elise from Wild Moon Woman made her own deck. I don't know if it's for sale, but she did her own deck with stock photography. If I really wanted to make my own deck, honestly, I um, my little sister is an amazing artist, and I don't say that lightly. I don't give out praise very often. Like I'm very stingy with it. So for me to just come out and say that she's an amazing artist, I'm gonna have to take my word for it. But she is great. She she really many different styles, many different um, feels. She's just really good. So I would I would have, like author a deck and come up with like a rough outline, and then I would have her do the art for it. All right, card of the week for us, you guys, and then we're gonna call that. I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna go put dinner in the oven, be all domestic and shit. All right, well, I'll do three cards for us. I'm feeling the three mojo today. I'm going to get the book out because I will read from the book for this because I'm curious to see like what the book is like. Okay, so we got conflict. We got passion. And we got earth. Conflict, passion, and earth. So just reading these intuitively. Um, and then, okay, so conflict, passion, and earth. I think this is a, honestly, I'm kind of getting like a just stay grounded kind of a feeling from this reading. Like there's shit we want to get done. We're very excited about it, very passionate about it. And emotions are maybe running a little bit high this week for us, like very like, you know, like, oh, like whatever, like there's some conflict going on, possibly over the thing that we're passionate about. Um, but, you know, there's like just, just emotions are running high. Like it's very, like a very manic kind of feeling I'm getting from that. Like a very like, I've had three coffees and I'm going to go do this thing. If you tell me no, we're going to get a ginormous fight. Oh my God. Like, you know, like, oh, like, like get up and go and like get it done. And like, yeah, like Red Bull commercial, like, very like oh yeah this thing i want to do it's amazing and it's going to make us forget all the stuff that we had that we should be doing and there's going to be fights about it and like i'm just getting very like a very like the stuff we want to do is going to keep us from doing the stuff that we have to do and there's going to be fights over it if that makes any sense which is why i think we got this card which is a reminder to us to stay grounded like if we like keep ourselves grounded and rooted and like Okay, you can still go do the stuff you gotta do, but let's be a little realistic here. Like let's 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 bring ourselves back down to earth. Do we have the time? Do we have the money? Did you like this is this is very much a yeah, you can go play with your friends if you cleaned your room. Like like did you clean your room first? Did you do your homework? Like this is this is the reminder, like, yes, we can have fun. There's plenty of room for that this week. If you want to avoid the fights and the conflict and like the whatever that's going to come along with shirking your duties to go do the things that you want to do, like you got to you gotta bring yourself back down and remember that there's stuff you got to do first before you can go play. Um, and that's kind of the overarching feeling that I'm getting with a bunch of these readings this week. Like we got all Hierophanty and all um, whatever -y in, in creatives reading. Um, so... 
yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like, uh, yeah, this is just a very like, all right, like, that's awesome. You got the stuff that you want to like go do, but you know, I mean, like, you got to rope it in first. So that is our reading for the week. We've got earth, passion, and conflict. And I hope that made sense to you guys. Um, and thank you for sticking in with me for this live chat. I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful Sunday. Bye, Tarosphere.